its glory. We all have a memory. We all have a story. Was there an understudy? Where did the show stop? Did you see Barbara before she shot to the top? Join us as we revel in a reverie. It's my Broadway memory. Hello. Uh, yeah, we need jazz hands every single time that happens. Right. I, I just the, the way that, the way that I'm singing this is literally it's like um, was there yeah. an understudy? Did the, just like did they have vibrato? Because it's all it's, it's very it's it's in it's it's, it's in the mask, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Hi, yeah. Michael. Hi, Brian. Hi. I missed you. I know it's been it's been uh, a long three weeks, but we're excited to be back and um, welcome back to my Broadway memory. Uh, I'm one welcome of your back. hosts. Yes. Ryan Sedita. And I'm the other one of your hosts, Michael Kushner. And Woo! before we even start, we, yes, before we even started, we just wanted to, uh, we, we just wanted to acknowledge something. So, um, you know, we're, we're really glad to be back this week with my Broadway memory, but we're also really glad to be a part of uh, the Broadway Podcast Network because they've been encouraging us and, and, uh, and providing us with workshops and opportunities to engage in anti-racist work. Yeah. And uh, that being said, you know, we took two weeks off to lend energy and create space for the Black Lives for Black Lives Matter, which is a movement, not a moment. You know, just because we are back on the air offering some sense of levity doesn't mean that the work ends. We must continue to fight for equity, for inclusion and for an anti-racist environment, both in and out of the theater. Yes, and as always, thank you for joining us tonight. And if you are looking for ways to get involved and contribute your energies towards anti-racist work, Brian and I can absolutely lead you in the right directions where you can donate your time, your money, or your energy. Yes. So, With uh, that being said, would you like to welcome our good news correspondent of the week? You bet your bottom dollar I do. <laughs> so, uh, so, I, so this is, uh, this is a friend uh, who is uh, was just introduced into my life and um, very swiftly, and uh, I'm I'm so thrilled to have uh, Dimitri Moise uh, with us for some good news. You might have seen them on uh, Book of Mormon and uh, in Book of Mormon and Beautiful, and they are going to talk about Claim Our Space Now. And Claim Our Space Now is an organization that uh, is emboldening urgent action to dismantle white supremacy and save black lives. So, Dimitri. Good news. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know, I love that video so much. It's it even surprised like, me this time. <laughs> I know, like happy, I know it surprised me too. But happy Pride, Dimitri. Happy. Pride. Just got water today. Why are you drinking water? Staying hydrated. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. I'm the worst. We're the we're the worst influence, Dimitri. <laughs> like we're just like anytime, anytime there's alcohol, I will take it. No, usually I'm yes, there. but I'm a bartender and I have to bartend for the next two days. So I think the next two days are going to include some I'm liquor. Bartending. Okay, good. I bartend in New Jersey, oh. up by where I live. Okay. Yeah. And they're like open. You're like open. Yeah, right, we right? have um we have outside seating now, so we're back. Wow. We're, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> we're back. Um Dimitri. Michael. Hi. Hi. Um, so Dimitri, you were just Michael. on you you were, um, <laughs> you were just a guest on your multi hyphenate on my podcast. Mm -hmm. And we we were speaking about uh call to action and um you know, we were talking about your hyphens being actor and activist, and you are uh, uh, the chair of an amazing organization, uh, Claim Our Space Now. And I was wondering if you could talk about that and um, fill us in. Sure. Well, um, it's been a wild three weeks, but you know, in the wake of everything that has been going on, I started talking to a colleague of mine from Beautiful. We were on tour together. and. We were having this conversation, and and my colleague Marla Luisa, who's the founder of Claim This Now, 
was talking to me about this vision that she had where she really wanted to save and defend Black lives, but with the realization that it takes all of us to make that possible. Um, in order to make sure that Black lives are protected, we have to work together. And that's really where Claim Our Space Now was born. And um, as you said, we are an organization that's emboldening urgent action to dismantle white supremacy and save Black lives. But we understand that that movement is intersectional. There are Latino people, Latinx people who are Black. There are Indigenous people who are Black. Um, black people speak Spanish, they speak Arabic, they speak French. So how do we reach all of those people and really show that all black lives matter? Um, and that's really where Claim Our Space Now was born. It's amazing. Uh, so talk to me more about, is there any way, because with good news, I love there to be um, a sort of call to action for our mm -hmm listeners and our viewers. So is there any way that we can get involved with Claim Our Space Now? Absolutely. So we're launching tomorrow on Juneteenth. Uh, and for those of you that are not aware, Juneteenth is the last official day of slavery in the United States. So it's a very important day for Black Americans, which is why we decided to make that our launch day. So first, you can follow us on Instagram at Claim Our Space Now. You can find us online. Uh, we're going live tomorrow at www.claimourspacenow.org. And we're also uh, having a call to action for early voters in New York, where uh, all of our board members were voting tomorrow safely with our masks and making sure that we're all protected. But we're taking selfies at the polls, exercising our right to vote on Juneteenth. So we're inviting um, any of you who are listening who are in New York and uh, have an early voting poll near you to take a selfie and tag us at Claim Our Space Now. That's amazing. Were you, Brian, you were gonna say something? No, I was just gonna say, I was looking at your uh, Instagram earlier for it um, and it looks like you guys have, uh, so you guys put together a board for this? Yeah, um, so what ended up happening was, this was a project that turned into something much bigger and uh, we're now we're a nonprofit organization. Our, um, we like are about to find wow. which is like crazy. that's a lot of work. So yeah, it took oh yeah to like get to the charities bureau, especially in the wake of COVID. Like mm. we're very lucky, and um, we're in the middle of fundraising now. Um, we already have people matching our grassroots donations, which is so exciting. We have a launch event tomorrow on Zoom. So if you want to DM us and RSVP, our special guests are going to be Brandon Nace, founder of Broadway for Racial Justice and Rosemary Ketchum, who just won in West Virginia, the first openly trans elected official in West Virginia. So we're going to have an amazing hour, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So DM us for the Zoom link, and uh, we're gonna send that out a few hours before the event tomorrow. Oh, That's on Saturday. really cool. Yeah. Dimitri, you're, the, you're just the model of of an activist leader. It's it's just like, I the, I'm, Every time I'm around you, I just like I feel there's this energy, and I and I'm so uh, I just I I I'm so inspired by what you're doing, yeah. And I can't wait to to get involved with uh, claim our space now. I mean, it's I think exactly what the world needs, especially the theater community as well, yeah. because I know that there's there's so much energy, um, there's so much energy that's happening. And there's so uh, many people that want to get involved and don't really I, know where to start. And that can be really overwhelming right. at times. And right, I feel, exactly like, I feel like, you know, really anyone can be an activist. Anyone can make change. You don't have to have, like I always say, you don't have to have like 10,000, 11,000, 100,000 followers. If you've got 200 followers and you're posting about something that, um, that you want to speak truth to power, that's 200 people who are seeing mm -hmm. that message. And that's important. Um, speaking of the Broadway community, we started a petition that called upon the Nederlanders um, because mm. of their fiscal support to Donald Trump and the RNC. And less than 12 hours after Claim Our Space Now launched their petition, um, Jimmy Nederlander emailed us and said he was donating $50,000 to Black Lives Matter. <laughs> and our petition is at 10,000 signatures and, and it's still going. So also if you're listening, change.org, um, calling on the Nederlanders to really uh, show up and defend the Broadway community because how can you support someone who is so clearly against Black lives, LGBTQ lives, and so many of us are on stage um, behind the scenes and 
creating this incredible art that people come to see. And what's so important that people are like actually realizing and looking into these things now. And so now that's not going to go unnoticed if yeah. they donate to something in the future that doesn't go along with the people who are um, paying them for services and supporting their work. Yeah. So I think people are going to be held more accountable from now on. Yeah, I think so. And it's not a bad thing to be held accountable. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you're racist. It just means that we're trying to create space for more people. And I feel like if you create space for the most marginalized among us, we actually create space for everyone. So mm -hmm. even though this is a really uncomfortable time, I think that um, I can feel something coming that I think will be really beautiful on the other side. Mm. Yeah. Heard. Heard. Well, <laughs> heard. And, Thank you. Um, I, I'm, pu I'm pulling this up right now, but speaking of Juneteenth, I'm, uh, I'm planning to be at the, at the, there's a Juneteenth Jubilee. Yeah. Um, joys and active resistance. Uh, join us for a celebration of all black lives. Uh, Friday, June 19th um, at 3 p.m. Are you gonna be there? I will be there, I'm volunteering. So I'll be ha helping, handing out food, water, masks. Um, yeah. Where so is that gonna be? Um, we're starting uh, in Malcolm X Park, I believe. Yes, 110, 110 and Malcolm X and uh, yeah. yeah, I'm 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 really uh, I'm I've been anticipating it uh, since I heard about it, so I can't wait to see you. And we'll be wearing masks. Yes, and it will be safe and uh, and all that jazz. But um, it's really time. It's 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 it is there. It is time for a change, and and that's why I think this happening all during like st during Pride. Mm -hmm is really, really important because it, you know, pride is not just about mimosas and brunch and fire Island. Those are things that, you know, there's a privileges that are great, you know, that have been etched into our culture and that's amazing. But ultimately uh, we have to be there for each other. We have to understand that it all started with a riot. You and know? I just, mm -hmm. I want to share a quote that we shared on our Instagram page from Marsha P. Johnson. Um, the quote is, how many years does it take for people to see that we're all brothers and sisters and human beings in the human race? Mm. So yeah. literally Josh put it in the chat, say it, say it. Say it, yes, yes, say it. Um, <laughs> but that, but that's what, that's the whole movement, right? Is to hold ourselves accountable and to make sure that, you know, something that I learned, you know, with uh, Broadway Advocacy Project, um, that's the I, I didn't misname that right Broadway yeah. coalition um Broadway advocacy coalition was um you know on stage uh, I see uh, I see diversity, diversity and I see you know and I see inclusion but backstage mm -hmm. off stage mm -hmm. there is there's little to none so um yeah. there's more work to be done there's more work to be done there's more work to be done and um I know that I'm going to be holding myself accountable and making sure that um, that I can contribute to that conversation and I and and I can make sure that um, I'm I'm the change that I want to see. <laughs> Ditto. And that's all we can ask for, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. Ain't that the truth, Dimitri? You are the best. Thank best, you. Best. Um, so, can you shout out your your social media again, just so just as a reminder? So my social media, my Instagram is right here at official. <laughs> and then you can also follow us at claim our space now on Instagram. And we're going to post it all uh, on our social media after the show. Dope. Did yeah. yeah. <laughs> dope, did dope. I love that. Okay. So I'll see you Sunday. It was yeah. Sunday. No. What? Sun is tomorrow. It Sunday? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. 18th is tomorrow. Today's Thursday. Oh, Friday. What day of the week is it? Who knows? <laughs> oh my god, sandwich! Oh my gosh, did you just hear my dog? Hi, sandwich! I do. Sandwich is like, sandwich is like. If I could be there, I would. <laughs> Babe, can you take care of him for a sec? Because he's like freaking out. You know I, mean? I don't know. Can you get Hi. <laughs> anyway, blooper reel. Um, Dimitri, you're the absolute best, and I can't wait to see you uh -huh. tomorrow. And um, and I can't wait to, there he is. I can't wait to get involved with Claymore Space now. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dimitri. Me. See you soon.
Yay! Yay. Oh, yeah, Dimitri is absolutely the best. Um, and I'm so glad they were able to come on the show today. Yeah, and, and, and I, I'm, you know, we call it good news, um, that segment. And, you know, in the past three weeks, that's something that, like, I've been struggling with for when we did come back, like, sharing good news. But that is good news, you know, all of the change and all of the uh, progress that hopefully is going to happen. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and good news should be a reflection of, of what is happening in our world. And, and what I've been so excited about good news section, the good news section is the fact that it's, there's always a call to arms. There's always a way that we can get involved and, and see change because Broadway isn't just about seeing a show and being entertained and just kind of, uh, yeah. you know, leaving with a smile on your face, especially today when there's so much marginalization and there's so so many people hurting we have to use our platform for for, for good. good for good <laughs> so, for good good news we're good i love that should we bring on our amazing we guests? should we've got great guests tonight and i'm excited to share memories with them um our first guest is josh layman who uh, was recently on Broadway in The Prom. He's also a BPN podcaster himself with Josh Swallows Broadway. Um, I'm a listener. It's great. And uh, he's know. been in I'm lots sure. of really great shows on Broadway, Hair, Groundhog Day, Finding Neverland. And uh, we're so excited to have him on tonight. And to go along with Josh... <laughs> Always a gag. Always a gag. Oh, oh hello, hi. friend. Oh, what Josh. What are you doing here? Hello, oh, welcome. Hi, I didn't see you there. Michael, Brian. Oh, what are you reading? Oh, Joshua, darling. Hi, hey, Bill. Oh. How are you? Just fabulous. I was gonna. I was about to introduce um your your co guest today. Is that okay? Yeah. So I think you might you might know her. I I don't know. You might, but um. I think you did the same show that um, I was literally obsessed with and saw three times. And um, I don't call just... them shows; I call them sections of my soul. But go on. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I would call the prom a, a section of my soul, and Fuck yeah, um, I would too. Fuck yes, I and would too. definitely a section of um, something else that rhymes with soul. But that's beside the point. And. Um, and <laughs> How dare you bring up the coal industry right now? There's so much going on. Politics is all you ever talk. Anyway, go on. Josh is one of those people that will make me literally wheeze. So I'm just going to bring on Caitlin Kinnan in because, and and she was nominated for her role in for her Tony for her role in the prom. She's absolutely amazing. Uh, just a, a force to be reckoned with. That's Caitlin, come on, say hi. Let's go. What oh did you say? God. Hello. Hello. Also, now you have sun on you. Wow. Gorge. It it goes through phases, um, but like we're back at a lower phase where it's now outside of like the building blockage. So it was a gift from Michael Mayer. He <laughs> brought it over this morning. <laughs> he really likes those lights, so it makes sense. I brought you we the love those lights. As a gift. <laughs> Thanks for coming on yeah. tonight, guys. Yes. And celebrating Pride with us. This yes. Thanks for celebrating month. Pride with us. Um, what's Pride to you guys? Hmm. Being authentic to yourself, no matter what that means, and not being afraid of it. That's serious. Joshi? Pride mirrors exactly what's happening right now in the Black Lives Matter movement. There has been, uh, I'm really, really big into gay history and it makes me ashamed that I never studied as much black history, um, especially yeah. black history until now. Um, but there are many similarities. Um, oppression is fucking oppression and that is why we pride. Uh, last year, I don't know the exact number, but over 300 trans people murdered. That is a lynching whether it be rope, yeah. bullet, or fist. Mm. That is why we pride. Yeah. Michael, how that about you? Pride is important. I am still afraid 
granted, I'm not in a relationship, but that's between me and my therapist, those reasons. But when I am, I am not comfortable walking down the street holding the hand of somebody. Because when I see somebody holding the, sand, holding the hand of another gay person, unless I'm on fire fucking island, I immediately notice that something is out of place. Hmm. And that is something society has taught us. And that is why we pride. And I get really super intense about that. No, I know. That's what I, I mean. Valid. I mean, when Brian and I were figuring out who we wanted on a pride episode, we thought of you two immediately because, you know, Josh, Caitlin and Josh are, are friends of mine. But, you know, Caitlin, you you had a historic moment um, on the Thanksgiving Day Parade, a historic moment that opened the eyes of so many people. Yes. In the world, and and Josh, I know your your opinions, uh, your not your opinions, but your experiences and your and your passion for history. So, like, so here's the thing: throughout the the experience of prom, you know, like I don't think anybody knew except me what exactly was going to happen that day. Hmm. I tried to bring it up to people. And nobody really, I don't think I tried to have the conversation with you, Caitlin, because no. you had enough on your plate. <laughs> but as far as like people like in the higher ups, I was like, this is going to have some serious backlash. And, you know, like we just need to be prepared for this. But also like, I am very proud of this moment. And this is an act of defiance mm -hmm. towards society Kinky Boots got so much fucking shit, and all they were doing was dancing in Kinky Boots. You know, like, this is going to be the first same-sex kiss. And the first thing that I did, I had that tweet ready to go. My dresser, as soon as we were done, it's time to dance, boom, Tandy, Tammy handed my phone, tweet. Mm. And that's when wow. it all started. Yeah, it was instant. And that is why we pride. Yes. And the, but the privilege of, I'm, I'm looking at the privilege that I'm experiencing, right? And I go, I came from a very liberal family. I came from a very accepting family. I started to come out when I was 13. And I looked at that kiss and I was like, gorgeous, amazing, beautiful. But then I realized the weight of it and the fact that there was nothing like that before and the fact that there were that there are kids that have never seen themselves be represented that way before and that we are still in a moment in history yeah well the maze parade is not oh i'm sorry i interrupted i'm so sorry please please we open like to form. do that on this open show form. it's okay you don't apologize josh do not apologize no, that's we right i'm the this. of broadway god damn it <laughs> So what I, all I was going to say is that, like, the fucking parade, that is not for the liberal bubbles in the world. The Macy's parade is attention Kmart shoppers. Mm. And so, anyway. The wholesome American families coming together on Thanksgiving. Bye bye, Birdie, the Ed Sullivan show. Okay. Mm. Right. It's going to be a really fabulous shoe. Caitlin, it's your turn. Well, no, like, even. Michael, you speaking to the privilege of it, it's like, I was pr am privileged and I was privileged in a way that like, it wasn't, as you said, it wasn't even something I thought about until mm. the day of. And I was like, oh yeah, this hasn't happened. Oh shit, okay, yeah, this is a huge deal. You know, that it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't a moment until the moment. And then like afterwards, the fact that, um, I did not receive any hate. I did not receive any negative comments. I did not receive any personal backlash for that event. And yet Izzy got death threats. Yeah. Wow. What? Yeah. There was that only, May. Yeah. During the My only was thing. at that show. Say again? My family was at that show. Yeah. Um, it was crazy. The only thing I had one person comment a thumbs down emoji on my post about it and the amount of 
hate that got thrown at Izzy was insane, yet we were a part of the same moment. But because of our differences, they chose to attack her. And it's absurd. That's wow. blowing my mind. But yeah. But it's actually not at the same time. Um the I, I'm not literally not to make this about me, but the seeing seeing the hate that is happening on social media is 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 unbelievable. And I'm doing this photo project where I'm combining the original importance of pride with the pressing yeah. importance of uh, of Black Lives Matter. Um, through a photo shoot that that I'm doing, and I'm posting a picture a day, and someone, and I do not want to give them a platform at all, but some less than human being decided to create an account and comment a, a, a horrible racial slur on the photos. And then when I blocked and deleted, they commented, they, they created a new account and commented all over again. And um, it's amazing what people can do or the lengths that they'll go through like the lengths that they'll go through for to to express hate yeah and when what, it comes to race sad about that i mean there are so many things that are sad about that is we're all we're living in a time where for a certain amount of time what was happening is like yeah, you get the online troll, you would see people who are able to hide behind their computers and say these vicious things, but because of our nation's leadership right now, that is moving into the real world and those hateful things are being said. They always have been said, but even more so now because of our leadership, they are being said in person. You yeah. know, so it's not only um, online, it's not hate hidden yeah. behind a screen. It's hate in real life, and that's not okay. Well, it's like the little no. fucker kid. Oh, I swear a lot. Is that you're good? So, We're how do it? Well, it's like you know the kid in elementary school that brings the BB gun, and you find out that their parents are like the ding a ding dings of the town. And it's <laughs> like, right now, the president is the ding a ding ding of the town. And all of his little brat stepkids are like, yeah, well, my dad says it's true. Um, yeah, and he also, has a lot of kids. And he did. But to clarify, when I said that I talked to people, he like I was, it was not like producers. And maybe I should have gone to them. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because our producers did take good care of us. Yeah. And I believe that they all thought that we were just doing the best number in the show. Yeah. But, yeah. And that it really wasn't going to be an issue where, because we do live in a liberal, I mean, we are in show business, kids. We are carnies. We are as liberal and filthy as it gets. Yeah. Um, you know, I Some, think yeah. we forget that the rest of the world are not show folk. Right. Yeah. It's really, it's really difficult. It's really difficult because my high school issued a less than statement. American Heritage School le issued a less than statement and we called them out. Mm. And um, a lot of alumni called them out. And I mean, I wrote a really eloquent, I was really proud of this. And a lot of people came forward and wrote really eloquent, beautiful statements and they deleted every single comment on the on their on their page and then blocked us That's from being able move. to comment back. We love censorship. What'd you say? That's a bad move. <laughs> oh, that's a bad move. But but what's so crazy and what part of my conversation that I had before was my my favorite teacher in the world, Elena Garcia, a Cuban American, um, was uh, my teacher up until sophomore year of high school, and she was fired. And when we went on a two day silent protest, they were so threatened that they physically removed her from the premises and her two young kids were students there and they weren't allowed to be picked up by her or anything. And wow. that's a big red flag right there. But um, hopefully one day they'll, they'll learn and they'll listen. And, um, and that's the thing about that. It's like, we are in a big liberal bubble, but so, a, a, any way that we can, any way that we can, per, our work can permeate outside is, you know, is the, is the way, 
it goes back to what Dimitri was saying that it's like even if you are speaking to a small platform you're still speaking to people even if you are only talking to 200 people that is still 200 people who will then go on and tell another 200 people you know we have to keep yes. expanding outside of the bubble of New York theater I yep. also feel like this is above us <laughs> this is about education reform um this is not an attack yeah. about teachers. This is about, this isn't just like voting for the president. This is voting for your local government. Yes. Who are making the rules? Who is deciding what children are learning? Because people decided that I wasn't going to learn the truth about American history until I was almost 40. And I'm not blaming it on them. I'm almost 40. I should have known this shit, but yabba dabba do. I'm learning it now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Why are kids not learning this? People would have more compassion. People would have more knowledge. People in Germany know from day one what mm. they did. Granted, people in Poland, they voted for people that are covering it up and saying, no, we didn't do it. Mm. You know, and also, every almost every country in Europe had slaves too. It is time that we wake up and go, shit, we need to teach all this. And if <clears throat> one more non-Jew <clears throat> like professes their knowledge of Jewish history and uses it against me in an argument, I'm going to scream. It's it's so it's so preposterous. It's literally preposterous because well, they're like, you you know, Jews, they didn't have a they didn't they didn't riot. It's like, yes, we did. We we rioted. A few times we protested. We, we protested we many times. Sea, then. Motherfucker, we parted the Red Sea. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we got the hell out of there. And I had a conversation with in with a British immigrant who I learned after the conversation is not even a citizen, and she was totally denouncing the protests, the riots, and everything. And I had an hour an 11 minute conversation with her. And by the end of it, she was actually saying, she actually said black lives matter and meant it. And and that's one person, but that's still one person. Well, now she'll tell her circle of friends what she hopefully learned and hopefully they'll see it better. And that's sort of, I guess the win for the day. You know what I mean? It's so. And there are also people that I feel are lost causes. There are people that I yes. love that I love, that I am related to, that it breaks my heart and that I will always love and that I'm always gonna be there for. They are mm. my family. Yeah. But yeah. they are lost fucking causes. They are trapped yeah. in some weird dimension, some bizarre Pleasantville that it's heartbreaking. Yeah. And it's like yeah. heartbreaking. A I can either end my relationship with you forever or I can just let you die out. Hmm. And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. And I can love you and let you extinct <clears throat> yourself and then inherit all your shit and give it to liberal causes. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. But um Ain't that the truth though, but that's true. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's uh <clears throat> it's a there's a lot going on in the world. Yeah. It's uh it's hard. What do you Thank guys you that conversation guys say we share some Broadway memories? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Mary Poppins. <laughs> uh, I, I wanna start today. You wanna start? Yeah, I wanna Brian, why start. don't you yeah, and share share the this share memory example. Yeah, this I'm going to share an example, and uh, you guys will follow suit. Okay. No, I'm are you joking. not pick, are you not picking at random? No, I'm not picking at random because this one involves Josh, <gasps> oh. and thir and thirteen year old me, and I didn't even put all the puzzles together. But oh my god, it's kind of right. crazy. But I saw the closing performance of Hair. Oh my god! On June twenty seventh, two thousand ten, yeah. which was Pride. Yeah. Um, and I do remember this was like right after I graduated eighth grade. Um, my parents <laughs> decided let's let's take him to a show where there's nudity. Um, That's right. So I remember this was the first lottery that we tried. 
and we were like, it's the last performance of hair. You won the let's, lottery let's the last try. performance of hair? My mom did technically, but um, so it was crazy. I think she was like the one of the last names called. It was me, my father, and my mother, like trying to get three random tickets in a lottery with 300 people entering. Do you remember what side of the theater you sat on? Okay, so this is really interesting because um, my mom and dad ended up taking the two tickets that we won in the lottery and my dad purchased me like a premium center orchestra ticket to see it. Dad! I know, right? So uh, they sat in L like on the right house right and then I sat on like uh, fourth row like D like right on the aisle um uh house right side of like the center I was by your parents when i was margaret mead oh my god no i and and i totally remember that scene but anyways um it was crazy because what really i want to hear your perspective of this but it was the first time that i was in the city for pride um you know as a, like a young kid and you um were, what's that were you out no no, this was, I was just graduating middle school. Um, didn't even know yet. Hey. <laughs> but um, I do remember uh, Let the Sunshine, of course, going up and getting to stand on stage with everybody, uh, literally being by myself, of course, because at that point, like, I couldn't find my parents. I know, and poor people couldn't get to the stage. <laughs> After the show, we're like, D did you get on? Yes, we all made it. But, um, it was crazy because like looking up on the stage and seeing all this pride and seeing like men in sundresses and with long hair and uh, flowers on their hair and like totally dressed to the nines, knowing that they were going to see the final performance of hair on pride. Um, it was really crazy. Like looking back at that and like standing on stage at that moment. I, I want to hear that from your perspective, Josh. Well, you know who the... <clears throat> The person in the sundress was? Who was it? Shakina Nafak. Oh, oh my God. Uh, wow. Now that, that, that was. Now that I'm, think now that I'm <clears throat> thinking about it, Shakina, she talks about that That was before moment. Shakina was Shakina. Wow. Um, Shakina would come to see her often. And this is before I knew what trans was, really. Mm. I knew that there were like drag queens and, but I had no idea that people were like born trans. I didn't know what it was, you know, but, um, and what's really funny is that for my program, because I don't keep programs anymore just because I live in New York and I'm like, I don't have real estate for this. So I usually just give them to like my theater friends that love them. Um, <clears throat> But I I found three programs. Oh, Josh, thank you for your Living on Love playbill. Thank you. Living on Love? Wait, oh, <laughs> stop it. I was like, what is that? You're neat. Um, <laughs> but the Public Theater did a reunion show of hair with all of us in um, 2017, where we all got back together again and did it once more. Wow. Um, at Lincoln Center. Uh, so it's crazy. And that show was crazy. Um, it, it was, it was really um, like, like thinking back on that and like realizing that you were in that and like that I was going to be able to share that with you tonight, I thought was really special. And then I looked at my signed playbill and there you are yeah, in green. Yeah. So 13 year old self met you. Did you as a 13 year old like standing on that stage in that moment, were you able to <gasps> come to the beer? Oh. Yes. I'm were sorry, Caitlin. To, like, no, you're fine. Were you able to like process any of that in that moment? Like, were you mm -hmm. able to like realize how big of a moment for you that would be in the moment or was it only until later that you were like holy shit I was gay and this is awesome no because I didn't realize it at the time you know yeah. within myself but um I, I just thought it was a really I thought it was a great cultural moment yeah. and like awakening just just to see in see what New York looks like yeah or you know the country and theater mm. yeah yeah my my boyfriend just commented, but 
he to this day he he says that that hair is his favorite show he's ever seen on Broadway. And for that boy to see a show five times on Broadway, he must have really loved it. Wow. Well, that means a lot. Um, yeah, no, it was the most crazy experience of my life. Thinking back on like everything that the show's about, my mm -hmm. God, could we use a little hair right now? Um, and not some like bullshit version of hair because I get it. Hair's a weird show. It was written by <sighs> fucking addicts, but <laughs> no offense, everyone, but it means something real. Mm. And, um, Diane nailed it. She nailed it. And this cast, that original cast, the the replacement cast did a great job, but that original cast, there that was lightning. That was lightning at a specific time. That was magic, mm. and it was filled with so many specific perf performers that uh, you know. Yeah. You just can't find. Oh my god! It is crazy. Like even looking back at like the tribe members that are now like Kate Rockwell <laughs> and Rachel Bay Jones, all these like Rachel. people that everybody knows. You know, yeah, oh, Vanessa Ray. She's a television star. Well, Michael Kilgore. Allison Gwynn. Um, Allison Gwynn. Yeah. Allison Gwynn, Rachel Bay Jones. Michael Kilgore. Uh, it's an amazing cast. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing cast. There you yeah, are. Kedra, oh my God. My baby headshot. Jen Seth. Annalie Ashford. Wow. Oh, Jay. Look at Jay. It's amazing. Look at these headshots. I know. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. That's good. That's what my Broadway memory is about. I ha see this this the last episode we did uh, before we went on hi hiatus for three weeks was my version because we had Jonathan Freeman, the voice of Jafar, on as a yeah. guest. So th that was my ver Ugh, look at that playbill. I love that. Look at young little Johnny Groff. When we got together again, he oh my god, because he was our original Claude, and then that uh, wig. Gavin was doing something in London, so he couldn't come do this one with us. And so Jonathan came in and did it. I mean, look at how young all of us were. Just babies. Wow. Fucking babies. Josh, I don't know if you see this comment on the video. I don't know if you see it, but Meg Fansler says, Josh is part of one of my favorite Broadway memories too, bonding over our adoption stories. He'll never know how much that moment meant to oh, me. Oh, I remember that. I think at the stage door of prom, right? Hi, Meg. It's amazing. Hi, Ma Hi Meg. <laughs> Look at little John Groff. True story. Gavin's wig fell off one night. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I mean, all of our wigs fell off at some point, but. Uh, the, his was yeah. called to attention. <laughs> Jumping off stage, hair. Fix the wig, fix the wig. Now I'm going off stage and hair, hair, hair. Yeah. Oh, That's man. That's hysterical. Yeah, when I when I saw Adina do Wicked, um, she got really into this moment. It was right before Wonderful, and I think she was. I think she just like gestured like that to George Hearn, and she hit her mic on her hat, and it just went up. <clears throat> and she literally stopped and hit it twice, and gave a thumbs up to the soundboard, and just continued on with the show. <laughs> oh man, hilarious! Happened on stage. Caitlin, do you want to share your experience? Okay. Well, you have your Broadway memories? <clears throat> so I think, oh, let's see the best way to, okay. Which you can pick on rant, okay. About? Josh, pick one. Um, The second on my right. Which is your, <laughs> this is going really well. Over here. Is it? Do this. Over here. Yeah. This one? The there second, no, no. the second one. The second, second one. No, the, the second one in. Yeah, yeah that, one. that one. This is a good choice. Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> starring Broadway <laughs> darling Katie Ladner. Exactly. Starring Broadway darling Katie, Katie Ladner. Ladner. So, Sunset Boulevard. Um, Sunset Boulevard. I knew nothing 
about this show going into it. I am a bad feeder going. I don't on. either, Caitlin. It's okay. Still I don't. No idea. And everyone had always been like, oh, Sunset. Oh, Sunset. Oh, Glenn. Oh, this. Oh, this. And I was like, I don't. I don't know. Um, but then my best friend was cast in her first Broadway show. Amazing. So I was like, well, duh, I gotta go see it. So I went and saw my best yeah. friend, Katie Ladner. On what day did I go? My ticket's still here. Um, May 17th, 2017. And I went and saw my best friend make her Broadway debut and I shat That's myself. Amazing. And she was so good. She was so good. The Who did she play? She, let's look. Yes. Was she um, Alice's role? Was she? No. Oh, was no. That was. She was Mary. Yes, yeah, she would be like, "Well, that Mary, I look great. How's everything at great? <laughs> I've got a network. Things are great. Yeah, Mary, you are fierceness. We should <laughs> yeah. have Mary. Yes, let's have lunch." It's perfect. Um, but it was so cool because like I again I don't know my Broadway history at all. So I don't know what like the original set looked I like. I saw it. Set was like this. You crazy. saw it, Josh? Wow. Yeah. Oh Betty Buckley. Whoa. You saw Did Betty. They have stairwells, or was this just for this production? It that the set for this was, was grand a joke. Um I the loved original it. set. Well, yeah, because you didn't know what you were missing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But the set for this was like staircases and like scaffolding and like everything all over the place. And so I had to watch my friend just like <laughs> run her ass off around this crazy set. At the, the palace, palace, right? At the palace. At the palace. And there's a special, there are two kinds of pride that you can feel when you see your friends on Broadway. Mm. And one of them is like the pride of someone who's like been on Broadway, they've been in a thousand shows and you're seeing them do their thing. And it's just the most wonderful feeling of like, look at my friend go. But there is a special moment when you get to see someone you love so much and someone you know so well make their Broadway debut and make um, their dreams come true. Magic. You know? yeah. And being able to witness that is just so special. And she, yeah. of course, has gone on and already done like a million other Broadway shows, but it just, it was such an incredible moment to see my best friend living her best life. And with like these incredible people in this show, it was so, so cool. And I am so glad that I have this Broadway memory. I love that. I, you know, I, I, I really like the show, but it wasn't that revival that got me into it. It was seeing Alice Ripley at at um, at uh, North Shore Music. Yeah. There was North Shore Music that uh, as her as Norma. That's the mm. production that got me into it. Mm. And I, and weirdly enough, the my favorite song that I cannot stop listening to is "The Ladies Paying." It's a random song but I'm obsessed with it. And for YouTube purposes, if you YouTube Patty's last show, Patty, she pushes the tempo because she was unfortunately fired from the production and she had just finished throwing out her furniture out of her dressing room window. Mm -hmm. And then, and then <laughs> did, and did the show, her last show, and she's pushing the tempo so much, and it's it's I iconic. Wow, is one of those things. I'm gonna that look that up. There is so much history in all of these like shows, and the fact that you can go back and look at Sunset Boulevard and look at the journey that like how did it like start with Patty, and then she got fired, and like all of that. Her audio book is absolutely hilarious. Yeah, well, I know the drama. It's insane. The drama. The drama. It's amazing. And Diane Carroll is really great as Norma. That cast album is really awesome. Also, and the, the bootlegs are really awesome. I know people aren't supposed to like bootlegs, but fuck you. Um, are you the kidding? I love bootlegs. Betty, Bo uh, Betty, Buckley, uh, Betty Buckley. Betty Bootleg. I mean, come on. It's so good. Uh, a Betty Bootleg. <laughs> a Betty Bootleg. <laughs> Betty Bootleg. Betty bootleg, hashtag Betty bootleg. That's the new, do you guys know? Okay, I just have to share. So what I used to do in middle school was with AIM, right? 
I was Jafar oh. fan 91. That was my screen name. Yeah. And, um, and what I would do is I was on Broadway fan boards when I was in middle school. And what I would do is I would get up at about six in the morning. I would, I am my friends and I would look at their trade list and offer my trade list and start an AIM file transfer and I and then get ready for school, go to school, come home. And by the time I came home from school, I would have a new bootleg of a Broadway show to watch. The internet. When I discovered YouTube in like fourth grade, I was like, shit, I could watch Wicked again and again and again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we well, we know about your room as well, Brian. Yeah, oh, we, we went over that. No. Was that that wasn't your sorry, first? Sorry, Josh. We're, we're giving Josh it? PTSD. I'm so sorry. What'd you say? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, Josh. <laughs> Look oh, at I'm your sorry. face. Oh well, no, you're talking about Jess though. You can, was talk, that Vosk? About, you can talk about Jess. Jess is was that Vosk? Who was unbelievable? Um, I don't know. This one might have been Vosk. Yeah. If it's Vosk, we can talk about it. Let me see. Yeah, it's Vosk. Okay, okay, you can talk about Vosk. Yeah. Vosk brought this brought this this new thing. She's Streisand. Oh yeah, she's unbelievable. She is 2020 Streisand. Streisand 2020. Hmm. She's unbelievable. She's unbelievable. I mean, she was amazing in that role. It was unbelievable. And she's wonderful. I love her. She's the best. Um, Michael, do you want to share yeah. a memory before we uh, we do a little game? Yeah, Look, yeah, we're gonna play a little game. Binder. Oh, this is one of. Oh, we've I got binders now. That's what we do. I have binders. All right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do random. Oh, I did that one. That was a. That was I did that one in a previous episode. Wait, Weirdly that? enough, that's like weird. Ground? I know, isn't it? Oh, I landed. I saw that one. What'd you say? What'd did you, you say? Do you have himself and Nora in there? Did I see it go by? Himself and Nora? Did oh. It's off Broadway, but still. Mm -hmm. I probably did see it. Oh, yeah, himself and Nora. With Whitney Basher. That was another one that was in my, my collection of things. At Minetta Lane. Mm -hmm. I have to look at that. But I'm actually really glad that I landed on this one. Trip of love. Yes. Did anyone no. see this? Oh, really? No. Did anyone see this? I have heard so many stories about this. Tell us. Tell us about it. Did you see the whole thing? Who was in it? Please remind us who was in it. A lot of really good people. I know. A lot of really good people. It was, um, oh God, man. Um, oh boy. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, Morgan. Was, oh, Morgan. <laughs> hi. It I was, love hi. You. Love you. We love, we love. Um, too, Austin too. Miller, Lori Wells, Kelly Felthaus, Tara Palsha, Brandon Leffler, Dion Figgins, Joey Calvary, Yesenia Ayala, Alex yeah. DeBar, Colby Lindman. Ashley Blair Fitzgerald, Daryl Getman. I don't know any of these names, but the show. Yesenia Zanita. Hmm. Oh, that. Oh, you, oh yeah, Yesenia is. Girlfriend. Oh, um, I literally didn't know that's how you spelled her name. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, literally, it was a. It was, a trip. It was a. Bizarre. Um, trip it was just like montages of moments so oh, interesting and and like and and just um visually stunning things and and audio and audio and Count audibly stunning things and would you say countless money but and countless money money and countless money um, I don't. I don't think the playbill will do it justice. But the perform. I will never, ever, ever forget that experience. It was one of those where it's like I don't know if I could ever explain it. Yeah, In because it was like it was genuinely like a trip. It was like you took shrooms and just kind of were like, okay, here we go. Yesenia said that it was like Asia Broadway or something was presenting it. And it was this show, this like jukebox show 
that just had endless amounts of money. And they, yeah, they yeah, kept yeah. popping up like, do you want comps? Do you want comps? Do Basically, they didn't care that it wasn't selling. They just wanted it to run in New York for a, enough so amount of a time to give it some cred. But like the guy that rode a scooter, like the scooter like went off, like drove off the stage one day. Like yeah. all this it's crazy fun. stuff kept going down over there. That's what theater was it at? It was at stage 42. Which is oh, okay. which is the old little Schubert. It didn't and move. No, it was at the old little. It was at where the Yiddish. I felt like it was downtown at one point, but I could be wrong. No, no. that's Stomp, honey. That oh. was that was <laughs> Natasha Pierre mm. and the great comma. Oh, and the great and the great comma. Yeah, the great comma. Yeah. Um, do you want to play? So yes, basically yeah. that was an interesting experience. It was like a drug trip. I remember it all, but I remember nothing. <laughs> that was that. That's good. <laughs> that was that. Let's play a game. Let's okay. see what, yes, I keep looking over because my cat is just like snuggling my arm. Which one? Sweeney. Hey, Sweeney. Hi, Sweeney. So that's okay. Sandwich before just like decided it was his time to belt. Which was so. saying, hey. um, we are going to play a game called Memory. Oh, no. Oh, God. No. Alan, if you could put that on the screen. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. And, okay. So here's how it works. We're going to display 14 playbills, or in this case, pride bills, on okay. the screen. Oh, Jesus. And you're going to have 60 seconds. Uh, each of you are going to have your own time. Um, 60 seconds to memorize as many as you can in 60 seconds. And, and then you're gonna have another 60 seconds to recite back those yeah. as many as you could. So okay. who wants to go first? Josh. Josh. Okay. okay, fine. Josh is going first. <laughs> All right, I do always suggest that Caitlin doesn't look at the screen so she doesn't get confused. Okay. No, look at the screen, Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in three, two, one. Okay. Said, you know, I, 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 Saigon, be more chill, mean girls, Mormon, Aladdin, fun home, great comet, Memphis is rotten, SpongeBob, Beetlejuice, Cabaret, Wakers, Hamilton, Miss Saigon, be more chill, Miss Saigon. Be more chill. <laughs> this is hard. That's a great idea to sing that. Shut up. <laughs> a minute is a long time. You're yeah, a long time. You're really bad. You're a long time. Do you want me to only give you 30 seconds, Caitlin? How dare you? juice, Five, four, one. Okay. Um... Miss Hagan, mm -hmm. shit. Um, <laughs> and then it was something that I didn't like. Um, and then it was something I didn't like. Yeah, because it was like, Miss Hagan, I like- You don't it. have to do it in order. Miss Hagan, no, 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 no. Oh wait, Miss Hagan, be more chill. Um, <laughs> you don't have to do it in order, Josh. No, 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 no. The last one was Hamilton. Great. Um, the one underneath, um, um, underneath the first one is, uh, Band's Visit. Because mm -hmm. I hate this game. Um, I'm not good at this. None of them were Four, three, two. Oh. <laughs> Josh, you did great. Okay, you did great. You got four of them. You got four. 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 You. you were missing something rotten, Mean Girls, SpongeBob, Beetlejuice, right, Cabaret, right, right. Beetlejuice. Waitress, Mean Girls, Book of Mormon, I Aladdin, understand. From Home, Go Great on, Comet of 1812. The Great Comma. Okay. I get it. All right, Caitlin. But I'm so scared. You have to be. No, you're going to be great. Four. Okay. Ready? In Ready. three, two, one. Oh no. <clears throat> the rainbows are freaking me out. <laughs> Got different rainbows. 
Those are all the gay ones. I love it. Yeah. I, yeah. I tried to sprinkle them in both. Except 1984 isn't very gay. You're not going to sing them, Caitlin? I mean... No. <laughs> mount them silently, can't you tell? It's everything for me. Oh, uh, Head Over Heels. I loved that show. Did you? I did. I, I, I saw it twice, actually. <laughs> did uh, you? Josh? I loved the boys in the band. I loved that. Ugh. Oh, so fucking that. good. Nineteen eighty four was triggering for me. Okay. I love that book, but I did one. It was okay. So okay. Bronx Tale, War Paint, Prom, Head Over Heels, Once on This Island, um, Bandstand. <laughs> what else was there? Oh my God, Kinky Boots. Um, and Kinky Boots. <laughs> uh, Nineteen eighty four, The Boys in the Band. Russian. Oh, there are more so. Um, did you say your show? I don't yeah. know if I did, but the problem was there. Okay, yeah. good. Um, <laughs> and then what else? What else? What else? Did I say war paint? I think I said yeah. war paint. Yeah. Um, you got five more, uh, four more left. What was the show that I really liked and I saw twice? No, um, I don't know. Uh, you said head over heels, but I thought I already said that. She did. Um, yep. Yep. Oh. Great. Um, I don't know. Oh, That's what I got. You're great. You got. It. So it's okay. Okay. So the ones you didn't. Like Chi okay, Chicago. I thought you had to do it in order. <laughs> oh, Frozen. No, I told you. Chicago, Frozen, Come From Away, Angels in America, and Harry Potter Part I, One. I thought you had to do it in order. No. No, oh, I was screaming it's okay. We'll we'll even double yours. Let's see. One, two, three, I four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. She's st she still got it. I don't like that. I don't want you to You're not fun to play with. <laughs> I want to go home. I love you, Josh. Luckily, Josh, you're quarantined, so I hate you too. No. no. Take that back. Take it back. I Josh, take it back. Josh, Wait, Josh, yes, I just want to bring this up. This is a really another another really fun Broadway memory with you. Okay. Um, okay. So I was at the one of those like last performances. I guess it was in like the last month of the prom where you went on for Barry and Chris Sieber went up on a line like Lin Manuel. M -m -m -m. Like it was hilarious. You know, I have that. Oh Lin Man Man Lin Man 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 Lin. It was just absolutely hilarious to witness. Betty Bootleg. Betty. Betty Bootleg. That's Josh's screen name. Betty Bootleg. Caitlin, is it crazy the first time I met you was when I photographed you for Dressing Room Project? That seems weird and wrong. Well, it's crazy because when I shoot backstage, I like maintain like professionalism and decorum and I'm good. And obviously, you know, I'm not that. So <laughs> it's like funny that we met that way <laughs> first time. And now look where we are. Sharing oh, memories. We are. That was fun. I, could, I like yeah. you doing that. You took very nice photos of me. Thank you. Thank you. I wish I, um, you know, it's interesting with Dressing Room Project because based, based on like stage manager and, and press rep and like what the house's rules it's are. Tricky, it's like yeah. sometimes, it's tricky because sometimes I'm allowed to be up until places. With the Lion King, I was able to be there until intermission. Same wow. with like Wicked, like there are wow. shows that I'm allowed to be till intermission and other times, other shows I'm out at half hour and they're like getting me out. So, you yeah. know, it's interesting. And unfortunately the prom was one of those shows where I had to be out at half hour. Um, but you know. I was like, don't happens. worry, I'm there two hours ahead of time. Come on over. I know, I know, I know. So crazy. I and live Josh, here. Tonight, I, I live here. And Josh, tonight is um, Indie Series Awards, and Indoor Boys is nominated for 15 awards. Yes. Yay. Bang, bang. So that's exciting. We worked on that together. Anyway, that'll be fun. That starts at 9. Um, you guys are amazing. You guys were great. Thanks so much for coming. Lynn Lynn Manuel Miranda. One more time. Wait, so do it say. again. OK. Pretty great, huh? Take that land, Min Min Lan, Min Min Lan, 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 Min Lin, Lin Manuel Miranda. Yeah. 
that there it is. Thank you at the end of that is my favorite part. Oh, he left. The, Josh said he was we like, hate I, you. he was like, good night. Josh said <laughs> goodbye. He was like, I'm giving you my Betty bootleg and I'm out. Wow. Betty bootleg. Well, I Betty love bootleg this. I love you both. Thank you so much, thank you. Caitlin. Okay. And thank you. I love, let's get Betty bootleg trending. Let's get Betty bootleg trending. Um, first of all, she needs to be a drag queen. Betty bootleg. Hmm. I have to do that. Caitlin, what would your drag name be? We know Michael's. Oh, he's back. I'm back. Yeah. I don't what know. What would your drag name Sorry be? Sorry about that, Josh. Um, I would be Amber Alert. Right, Amber yeah, Alert. I do know. It's my um, drag name slash stripper name from ages ago when it was that, like, your first pet and the name <clears throat> of the street you live on. Mine is Kitty Vista. Oh, that's that's really good. Yeah. Mine, when I did that, mine was Honey Winifred. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, my other option of that would be Rainbow Deer. <laughs> wait, also Rainbow Caitlin Deer. Vista? Can, wait, can you say that, that first drag name? Kitty Vista. I love that Vista means a pleasing view. Oh, so well, congrats. And, and Michael's drag name is? Oh, I have three. Oh. Um, depending on the mood, depending on the mood, I'd either be Gorgina Menzel, um, Barbara Ganoush, or Lishanato Vafelcha. <laughs> I mean, I also thought that like more morbidly obese would be funny. But what's your equity more, name, Josh? My equity name more, is Damn Thickness. Right. Damn, damn, thickness. damn thickness. Oh. oh. Shit. <laughs> That's you good. want me to, get, to do some bump bump with you? All you gotta do is call me Damn Thickness. Damn. Damn Thickness. Yeah, that's right. Damn Thickness. And now you're gonna get some bump bump. Please come back. Well, oh, because he's a monogamous man. I think <laughs> your, your Broadway con. I think your Broadway con panel next year is just gonna be called Damn Thickness, and it's just <laughs> you saying that over and over again. To an audience of nobody because we're all wearing masks and, and bubbles. Yep. Oh my god. Ain't that oh, the truth? It's totally caught. Let's be happy. Yeah. It's, what is the green thing that keeps showing across your face? You turn oh into my oh, god. Oh. Up the ceiling. <gasps> oh wait, I thought it was my computer at first or a or a oh, ghost. Or something. That's really pretty. That's hot. Look at I that. like that. That's good. That's soothing. That's hot. All right, guys, you're the you guys are great. Best. Um, so where can we where can we find you guys on? So it's at Josh Layman and Caitlin. Where can we find you on Instagram or wherever your socials, whatever you want to do? What did you say? Caitlin dot that's, that's it. That's right. Yeah. On Instagram, you're the absolute best. We love you. We thank you for being here today. And let's and announce our guests for next week oh, really yeah. quickly. Let's announce our next guest. Who are they? Yes! Woo! Ooh, I'm here for this! Yes, yeah, everybody it's gonna be... come back next week. Yeah, because we love Strange Loot. We love a Strange Loot. And we love those two amazing artists. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a really good episode. I can't wait. Awesome. But every okay. episode is amazing. And thank you guys for joining the My Broadway Memory Legacy. You guys are amazing, and I can't wait to hug you soon. I love you. I love you. Thank I you, guys. Good night. Yay, you too. Bye, everyone. <laughs>